Hi, this week's weekly roundup is a little short, as I was pretty busy last week with contract work. And I promise, no more trumpets. If you've ever tried to quickly DIY battery packs together from 18650 cells, then the usual method is to gaff tape and solder. Making it more permanent is another thing altogether. This Kickstarter aims to solve that by providing a way to build up a battery configuration in multiple combinations of serial and parallel. Looks pretty good. There's been many sound cards for the Raspberry Pi in the past, but not many high fidelity ones. This Kickstarter allows sample rates up to 192kHz at 24-bit resolution, with RCA and SPDIF inputs and outputs, two MEMS microphones and a Sirius Logic stereo codec. There's also a daughter board that provides balanced line drivers. If you have a need to flash a whole lot of AVRs, then this standalone programmer will flash almost the whole AVR lineup. Just chuck a hex file onto an SD card, put your AVR in the ZIF socket and press a button. Easy. It can also flash MCUs using an ICSP header. I predicted last year that 2018 will be the year of the FPGA. Seems we're on track with that. This Kickstarter provides a Xilinx Arctic 7 FPGA on a tiny 5x5cm PCB. It also provides a bunch of buttons, LEDs, JTAG header and 36 GPIOs powered from 5 to 17 volts. Note you can also pick this up on Tindy. While over at Crowd Supply, Luke Valenti has been pretty busy with his next version of the tiny FPGA. The BX contains the Lattice ICE 40 LP8K FPGA, 8 megabit SPI flash, 3.3 and 1.3 volt LDOs, and breaking out 36 GPIOs. The tiny FPGA is shaping up to be the teensy of the FPGA world. So if you want to get into FPGAs, go pick up one of these. In pre-launch at Crowd Supply, there's the Hexabits. These are hexagon PCBs with a range of sensors and MCUs that connect in a novel wide mesh decentralized network concept. Not sure what that means, but I suspect it's using a one wire interface that connects to adjacent tiles while providing power and passes messages along a chain of tiles. Interesting idea. Another one in pre-launch, the Motion Pro is a motor driver board that can control up to four stepper motors at up to four amps continuous per motor, with control over current limits and stepper resolution. Access is via plain old TTL or USB, with opto isolators and noise filters for added protection. Runs off a 12 to 36 volt DC supply. Over at GripGets, you can currently pick up a new wireless dev kit from Georgian, or however you say it. This runs the ST Micro Blue NRG, which provides Bluetooth, and the ST Micro STLP, providing Sigfox. 38 GPIOs are pushed out on the Georgian module, but only a handful are available on the Arduino headers. The Banana Pi guys have gone uh, bananas. They've released a bunch of new boards. The first is the Banana Pi Uno 32. This is essentially an ESP32 module in an Arduino format PCB with the usual buzzer, LEDs, buttons, and USB port. Not really that exciting, but then they are also hedging their bets with another ESP32 based board, this time in the microbit form factor. It contains pretty much the same lineup as the original microbit boards 9 DOF IMU, 25 RGB LEDs, buttons, and buzzer. Then there's the Banana Pi AI Voice, which is a Raspberry Pi hat providing speech recognition. It's a little pricey at 170 US dollars, but runs the MicroSemi ZL38063 audio processor with an array of four MEMS microphones, two Class D audio amplifiers, and expansion headers for additional microphones and GPIOs. So far, the board works with Amazon Alexa, but no information on support for any other platform. The last Banana Pi board that's been released is the Banana Pi W2. This is a major step up from their previous Pi R2 router and is more of a NAS board than anything else. For a bit less than 100 US dollars, you get a quad core Cortex A53, Realtek RTD1296 SOC, 
2 gig DDR4 RAM, 8 gig eMMC, expandable to 64 gigs, SD, two SATA 3 ports, three gigabit ethernet ports, four USB 3.0 with a USB Type-C port, RTC, Pi, GPIO header, mini display port, HDMI out supporting 1080p, and the icing on the cake, HDMI in, and two M2 key slots, one supporting PCIe 2.0 and the other 1.10 with SDIO. The only downside to this board is the fact that it only supports 1080p. Everything else is right on the mark. Not to be outdone, the friendly guys have come out with another Pi form factor board called the NanoPi K1 Plus. The new board is identical to the NanoPi K2, but moves away from the AM Logic S905 SOC back to the Allwinner H5, which means you only get 30 frames per second at 4K on HDMI, swaps out the Wi-Fi Bluetooth module for a Wi-Fi only variant, and moves back to the horrible micro USB connector as a power source. Great. Way back in weekly roundup number 47, we saw the Odroid MC1. Now the hard kernel guys have come out with the Odroid MC1 Solo. This is the same as the Odroid MC1, but instead of a stack of four XU4S boards, you get just one. This drops the price from 220 US dollars down to 48 US dollars. Nice. Octavo Systems are the guys who make this system in package for the BeagleBones. They are now dipping their toes in the SPC market with the OSD3358 SM Red. For some strange reason they call it that. This board uses the same SIP as the Pocket Beagle, which not only runs the OSD3358, but has 512 meg DDR3 RAM, 16 gig eMMC, SD gigabit Ethernet, 4 USB 2.0 ports, 9 DOF IMU, LiPo battery management, and the BeagleBone expansion headers. Power is via the more sensible DC jack. The Firefly guys are also at it again. This time they've released another RK3399 based board. Although it's a bit more expensive, setting you back 240 US dollars. You do get an industrial quality board with the two gigahertz hexacore RK3399, two or four gig DDR3 RAM, 16 gig eMMC, M2 key supporting SSD and PCIe for 4G LTE, SD, DisplayPort, 2 HDMI out and in, Gigabit Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, audio in, out, and a bucket load of GPIOs. This thing has everything. No wonder the price tag is so high. One of the problems with the IoT market is that no one really has a good solution for addressing the security issues that we've seen in recent years. Things like fridges acting as DDoS nodes, hijacking cars via 4G, the industry really needs a whole lot of standardization. Microsoft are looking at doing this with their recently announced Azure Sphere. This is both a hardware component which will support the MediaTek MT3620 and a cloud service. The MT3620 runs a 500MHz Cortex-A7, an isolated 200MHz Cortex-M4F, and a Wi-Fi module driven by an Andis N9. So it's a bit of a powerhouse with the option of going into low power mode. MediaTek isn't the only chip maker to look at producing Azure Sphere compliant MCUs. For example, Nordic, NXP, Qualcomm, ST Micro, and Silicon Labs are heading into this deal as well. It seemed only yesterday that Steve Ballmer was calling Linux a cancer. The Rack Wireless guys have released a new module that provides some fairly accurate GPS tracking. It runs the NRF52832 at the core with NB-IoT provided by the Quectel BC95G and GPS by the Quectel L70R. It also has 6 DOF IMU, pressure, humidity, temperature and light sensors, all powered from 3.5 to 18 volts via solar powered battery. Ever since Autodesk bought Eagle, they've been making some pretty consistent improvements. Well, the subscription charging model wasn't an improvement, but on the software side there's been several. Eagle 9 has just been released. This brings several changes to design workflow. Quick Connect allows you to define groups of signals in an abstract way. Move them around, save and recall them in new designs. Quick Route allows you to route signals that are grouped together. Clean up grouped signals or complete a route automatically. Then the design manager gives you a much better overview of your PCB and schematic, allowing you to find and manage components and signals easier. Looks pretty good. 
Over at my favorite maker store, Tindy, there's a few new interesting things. This has to be the smallest ESP module around, only 10 by 14 millimeters with six GPOs pushed out, nice. And another digital audio card for the Pi. This one is similar to the audio injector Kickstarter, but only has audio out. Runs the Sirius Logic WM8804 and provides SPDIF, RCA and TOSLINK audio outputs. Another FPGA board, this one is aimed at Vision Projects. Not only does it have an ICE40 FPGA, but 8 megabit SPI flash, PMOD and ArduCam connectors, as well as MIPI CSI header. The LAN9512 is used in the ubiquitous Raspberry Pi. You can now get a breakout board for it, giving you a 4 port USB hub and Ethernet controller. So here's another idea. Mum mm -hmm. is sitting in the kitchen and she's just finished designing a new PCB. Wait, wait, wait. Mum has no idea about electronics. Okay, then I, I'm sitting there. And I'm looking all frustrated. Mum comes up and says, Hey, what's up, dude? I don't think she'd say that. More than likely, darling. What's the matter, darling? Yeah, okay, whatever. Then I say, Who am I gonna get to make this piece of peas for me? Then suddenly, JLC PCB Man appears, and we look surprised, and he says, Did someone say PCB? <laughs> oh, yeah, and then I bet you say, Oh, JLC PCB Man, you're my superhero. Definitely not saying that. Well, I'm not wearing the green suit. <sighs> so that's about it for this week's weekly roundup, and it was pretty short. You can check out my website for links to all these products and don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if you really like seeing more of this content, you can also support me on Patreon. So thanks for watching and see you next week.